I ask Adam if he would um, be Superman for us today. And uh, while I have a PowerPoint for this message, we're not going to use it because um, Kyle had called me and said that um, he had to work today. Judy had had fallen, and I um, I didn't know if Matt would show up, and um, so I said, Adam, I just I need you to shift over. We'll we'll skip the PowerPoint. Um, which is just has three or four points on it. Anyhow, they're just used to help us. And uh, he's now a cameraman. So, Adam, God bless you. And, and the good news is, Adam, I have to preach just to you. So, but I still want to hear those amens, all right? All right. <laughs> so good to be with you, and it's just wonderful to be with the family of God. I thank God for you, um, and I pray for you uh, just yesterday. I was in, or last evening, I was in running a bulletin, and, and uh, a lot of times I, lo- I like to walk the aisle, because you pretty much sat in the same spots, uh, not always, uh, some of you even have moved on me today, not to mention any names, but, um, but, but most of you, and so it, it just brings you right to mind as I pray over you and think about you and, and the pews that you typically sat in, and... Um, I just, I just thank the Lord for you. The title of today's message is actually Living the Life Worthy of Your Calling. Um, if you want to follow along in your Bibles, it's Ephesians, the fourth chapter of, of the Church of Ephesus. And uh, we're going to deal with 16 verses. And uh, I did bring my Bible up here. Where'd I, there we go. <clears throat> um. In the Pew Bibles, I don't, I don't have the page. If somebody has a page in the Pew Bible, you want to shout it out. You know what? I'm going to stop just for a moment. I just um, um, was thinking that maybe this would be appropriate. Does anybody want to praise the Lord today? Okay, Jackie. Yep. Amen. Me too. I uh, again talked to Karen, and and she's feeling guilty because she, her house wasn't devastated. And I'm I'm telling her it's a good thing we were praying for that end. You know, not that we wanted anybody's home to be devastated, but we were asking God to put His special blessings on it. So yeah, praise the Lord. Charlie, this is your cue, my friend. How many years have we been praying for this, Charlie? <laughs> will it meet your needs and then some it will praise be to God do you like it you love it hallelujah all right God is good and all the time amen amen so glad that you're here I praise the Lord um, with everybody that called off and then we got a, you know the phone's ringing this morning on Sunday morning when the phone rings it's like oh Lord this isn't going to be good um, you know in you, you wonder who's ill, what's going on, that kind of thing. And so, you know, reporting off, um, I got a message from Judy um, last night, and she said she may be in the hospital today. I, I praise the Lord. Judy, it's good to have you way back there. We're happy to open the doors. You, you forced us to do it differently. You know, this is out of our routine, but God is good. The things we do because we love somebody, amen? Yeah. Well, that's part of what the message is today, too. Uh, living a life worth, uh, worthy of your calling. And in Ephesians, I just want to begin by, by just reading those verses, uh, starting with verse 1, unity, uh, the title, subtitle is unity in the body of Christ. Uh, Apostle Paul writes to Ephesus, he writes to the church, he says this, As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. And then he, he begins to explain it. Okay? I'm sorry, Adam. This is when you just switch to the wide shot, buddy. Um, then he begins to explain it. And he says, be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body, one spirit, just as you were called to one hope, 
when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But to each one of us, grace has been given, thank you, Lord, as Christ apportioned it. That is why it says, when he ascended on high, he led captives in his train and gave gifts to men. What does he ascend mean except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. And it was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every, every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of men in their deceitful scheming, instead speaking the truth in love. We will in all things grow up into him who is the, who is the head, that is Christ. From him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Father, thank you for your word. Anoint these next few moments. Lord, help me as I intend to keep it brief. But as you teach, illuminate, Lord, our minds, Stir the fires of our heart. Move, Lord, the passion within us to follow and be and do that which you've called us to do in a worthy manner. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I am thankful for God and for his word. I am thankful that he reminds me oftentimes that I am not in this alone. I am grateful for the church. I am grateful for the Father. I am grateful for the Son. I am, I am grateful for the Spirit who empowers and who helps. I know that in recent days, many of you, and I have, um, it has thrilled my heart, Many of you have taken extra effort to help me as I am swamped. There is no other word for it. I am swamped in just a lot of stuff. Um, you cannot take on building projects without having a, a lot of extras to do. Um, it comes with paperwork. Ugh, paperwork. I spent uh, the past few days writing up for the district that we might... Um, be eligible and be able to receive um, the matching funds. We do want to help. It's part of what has made it exciting. We're excited for what God is doing here. We're excited for what God is going to do here. But what I'm really, really, really looking forward to is it's the guests who come in and the doors that get knocked on that God will bring and help people. When they come in, they'll be just like, I like this place. But what I know that I know that I know, what they'll like, there are two, two things they'll like the most. One is, is that God is here. And the second is, is that God's people are here. In other words, you. It isn't about me. I know that pastors help churches grow, and I know that God uses us, and I know that we have a gift. 
but the church works when we work with all of our gifts and that to which we've called, and it comes together, and it works as one. It's a, it's a, a worthy calling. In fact, I want to talk to you just for a couple moments about what I saw in this as I read through this, the characteristic of a worthy calling. And Paul outlines as he, as he, as he commands us that to live a life that is worthy of the calling that God has given us. And so what are those characteristics? I think it's interesting. I think it is, it is important, um, critically important for us to understand that when we have a calling, that it is so that we would glorify God and that we would serve others. And in order to serve others means we have to get out of ourselves and we have to look at others and it's going to require some things. It's going to require cert a certain character in us, a godly character in us. And so what he says is, that number one, that I notice is that it's going to require humility. One, one, of the things, one of the things about being a pastor is, is that while I may, be, I may be at the head here, I'm really at the bottom. And Jesus said, he who would be first shall be last, and the last shall be first. He who wants to be the greatest of all must be the servant of all. And, I, and I'm here to tell you that I have taken turns and that I have led by example. That I, I do some of the stuff that, you know, that I ask you to do. I can't do it all. And I know that you get that. I am, just this week. Nellie came to me and she said, Pastor, I'm trying to get this on the calendar, trying to help you out. Uh, you know, um, um, Judy back there said, Pastor, I can make those calls for you. Doris said, Pastor, you don't need to show me how to do this. We can, I'll get Ken, we'll figure this out, but I want to help. We can do things. Uh, Linda, you came to me and said, Pastor, I can paint. You know, and, and uh, I, by the way, Terry said to me, he said to me the other day, he said, Pastor, I want to learn how to do drywall. You know, and I'm thinking, oh, baby, I'm going to put him to work. I'm appreciative. As we are called by God, one of the things that's going to help us so that we don't get full of ourselves and we don't feel like we're the only ones. You ever feel like that? Oh, sure you have. I know you have. Because I feel that way. Is that we will, in, our, in humility, we will consider others Greater than ours. We understand that what, we, what God has called us for and part of the living the life that is worthy is that we will humble ourselves. We don't have to be the boss. Another, another point that I notice is uh, characteristic is gentleness. You know, one, one of the things, one of the things, Ken, you, you, make, you do great in woodworking. But if you were teaching somebody else, you know what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to be patient. I remember, I remember <laughs> don't look at him like that, Betty. He can be patient. He was patient with me when we were back there working on that desk. Well, one of the things, whatever your gift is, Bruce, if you were, and by the way, one, one of the things we want to do is we want to train up. We've got to get some young people in here, but when we do, we've got to start working with them. One of the things you want to do is start trying to develop a, a drummer. It's going to require patience. Nellie? You know, on, on the keyboard. We, we have to teach them how this works, how that works. And by the way, um, when I'm back there, I, I'm doing this with um, I'm doing this with the Hispanic church. Hector's never run a camera, you know. He's never <laughs> used software, and he's back there. He's trying to learn. Uh, he's trying to learn uh, the sound system, Adam. He's trying to learn the camera stuff and how to get it on and how to get it on Facebook and all that stuff. And in fact, I, I, I intend to, to stay over and help them today um, because he's just, he's making a mess of things. I watch his videos, okay? So I want to help. I, I, don't, I don't want to pick on him. His pastor came to me, you know, and, and, he, and he said, um, he said to me, he said, I, you know, he's talking to his church. And he says, I want to get them all close together up front because the camera shows all the empty pews, and we don't want that on online I said I feel your pain I said we're gonna we're gonna start we're gonna start renting from row six back we're gonna start renting those and make row six forward free you know and he and he understood that what you want people to see is that our, people come to our church 
we just sat all over the place, and, and, and he's got like 12 people, and, and, and believe me, they sat in the front pew, and they sat in the very back pew, you know, and, and it's just interesting, and, 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 and it would help if they were all on one side, but, but they don't, they take both sides, and there's like, you know, and I'm thinking, Lord, thank you for, for our numbers, <laughs> gentleness, humility, gentleness, patience, being patient. I mean, you know, long-suffering, that's, that's what it's talking about. That you be patient with people. Um, in, in the ministry, it takes time working with people. And sometimes, let's say um, you ladies are in the kitchen, and sometimes you're trying to train up somebody, and sometimes they, they, just, they just make a mess, and they just get it all wrong. You know what that means? That means you, you, you've got to be patient with them. Um. I've shared this with you before, but I let my, when my grandchildren come in, I let them do a lot of things. And Ani, uh, a year and a half ago, she'd come in, and, she, and her sister makes coffee for us, you know, and it's a big deal. I don't know why. It's just a big deal. They want to make Papa coffee. And uh, Ani comes in, and Ani's, Ani, everything Ani touches, it's like, oops. <laughs> and so she's making coffee, and she's got the canister over the silverware drawer, but she's got the silverware drawer pour, pulled out. Now, now, you already know what she's done. What I, last thing in the world, what I wanted to hear was, oops. Because she, huh? That was an accident, Papa. Yeah. And you just want to say, well, you just got out of the kitchen. But you don't. Patience. Why? Because they're young. Patience with other people and, and, and here's, the, here's the interesting thing. We're going to talk about our gifts in just a moment. But we, we, we're gifted. God, he gives grace. And the, and the neat thing about our gifts, the neat thing about each one of our gifts is, first of all, it's different. But it comes so natural to us. Because we've been designed for that gift. You know, for me to preach is not hard work. Uh, it, it's hard work to do all the other stuff that goes with it. But, but asking God and and, and you read through the scriptures, and all of a sudden things start jumping out at you. Um, all, all through the week, you know, somebody may say something to me, and that statement, and it's like the Holy Spirit's there, and it's like, and it's like that'll preach. Does that make sense? And so it just kind of comes. But you start working with somebody who's never done it. You've got to help them understand this has got to make sense. You got to go somewhere. You just can't come. But you know, my first sermon, my first sermon. Uh, I was accused of trying to preach the whole Bible in one setting. It really went long. You think I'm long today? It really went long. Okay. But the pastor was patient with me. And so in our calling, there's humility, gentleness, patience. There's acceptance. When It'll be interesting to, to watch the video when Adam gets done because he's going to do things different than, than the way I do them. And somebody's going to come along, and they think, you, you know what I'm talking about, they think their idea is better than yours. Oh, really? And you think, uh, and sometimes it's just how they're, they're wired and they're developed, and so you have to accept that they're going to do it a little bit different. Another characteristic that he tells us that all of these are supposed to be wrapped up in this thing called love. You see, if, if Terry comes in and he helps me with drywalling and he starts mudding and he doesn't use the tool that I think he ought to do, and he just, he's insistent, he's just sure that the small blade is the way to go, then in love, I'm going to let him find out. Okay? Not that he, he wouldn't listen. He, but you understand what I'm saying. I don't have to win. You don't need to win even sometimes experiences taught you better it's in love you let folks come and go and and they're all a part of this now we are talking about the church by the way within the church i was thinking about one of the problems that we have today in the church and even our church feels it look around we're the young people 
we got Adam back there. Now that I'm preaching to him, he may not come back next week. Because they want to do their things their own way. And the churches that they're full of young people and they do it differently. You know, and they need to, they need to, um, and, 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 I'm, and I'm wrestling with this because as we grow and we bring in young people, um, it'll be healthy. But a healthy church is going to have a mixture of both. Amen? But I think sometimes some, some of the churches, and, and it's been a real problem, is, is, is that we get our positions and then we don't want to let go or we don't want to teach or we're not patient. And so what happens is, is that people will go somewhere else where they're accepted and can be employed. And by the way, what I noticed when I read in this is that every believer gets a gift. Every, believe, every believer has a calling. Every believer. Helping them to find that, working with them within the church. And it needs to be wrapped in love. Well, let me move on. Let me get my, to my second point because I do want to keep this brief. Try to do that when we have communion. Um, the last thing before my second point that I want to share with you is, uh, is that he, he tells us that we need to work on the unity. And, it's, and, and we, we were talking about this in Sunday school. Doris said it. She said, one thing we're not talking a lot about here today is the Holy Spirit. And Paul writes to the church, and he talks about our calling, but he said one, one of the things that he, he was pointing out is, is that there's going to be this unity of the Spirit. He said, do, do everything. Make, take every effort to, to maintain the unity, and you do that through peace. You, you make peace when, when we're different. And, and, and by the way, you know, we are all different. We wouldn't want to be the same. Amen? I was, I was preaching in the, in the Hispanic church, and I was actually talking about our difference. I was talking about, you know, that they, they look like Mexicans, and I look like a mongrel, you know, just a, a mutt. But um, I look different than them. Blonde hair and blue eyes. And it's good that we look different, that we are different, that we're not the same. Um, when, when I noticed this with, with specials. I, Mary sang a lot of songs because of the range, Debbie, that you sang. And she sang them different. You know, um, one, of, one of the interesting things when we work with the praise team and new people come on the praise team, you know, they have to learn how things get phrased a little bit different because every leader does it differently. And it's good. And so we work on unity of the Holy Spirit, and Paul talks about that. Let me, let me I, I, this just kind of moves into this, the singleness of our purpose. Because God wants to use us and take our calling, and he wants, to, he wants to develop the church, and he wants to mature the church, and he wants the church to be effective, Jesus said that my disciples will bear much fruit, and that's done when the church comes together, and she takes her calling, and each individual with her calling, and we begin to work together, and we realize that we're different, and we realize that we've got to be humble, we realize that we've got to be patient, we realize that we've got to be long-suffering in some cases, we realize realize that all that plays into it if we're going to get the task done that Jesus Christ has called us to do and that God has called us to do and that we need to tap into the work of the Holy Spirit who ensures the unity in the oneness of our, of our master and his bride for he says there is one God, there is one spirit, there is one church who preaches the truth that, it, that they, they come together, there is one baptism, there is just one way and Jesus Christ is the way hallelujah and that we can do that and that we can do that because we are one i love it if you if you've changed churches anywhere and i have changed churches but i love it in both the nazarene church and in the wesleyan church we 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 take what G, what it, paul writes here seriously that there is one baptism and so if you have been baptized and you want to join in with us we will accept if you were baptized in a lutheran church we will accept if you've been baptized in the catholic church sometimes i'll ask people are you good with that are you satisfied because sometimes i'll rebaptize if they feel like it was something their parents did and they felt like they really need to have a believer's baptism then i'll do that but i will not dishonor and and God calls us to not dishonor. There is one baptism. And if we are baptized into Jesus Christ, then we are baptized. And it doesn't matter the denomination because there's one God. There's one Lord. 
There is one Savior. There is one Spirit. There is one baptism. And it is a singleness of purpose. How about I move to the third point? There is tooling that we need for the job. In verses 7 through 16, we, we began to see the list, and I'll just kind of go, I'll just kind of share a few things, but God has equipped us. He is in the business that our calling has been equipped with, I love this, grace. I was watching Bruce beat on the drums in practice. And I, and I went home, and I said this to Debbie. I said, honey, it looked like he was marching. Man, it was work. And I said, it got me thinking about Nelly, who's over on the piano. And that probably has to be a lot of work, too, because you've got to think about the pedals. There's pedals to sustain and pedals that, that, that make it louder and softer and hold it out and that kind of stuff. And you're, you're doing that, and you press harder. And I'm thinking, that's got to be hard. And you're looking at the notes. I don't know how they do that. I don't get it. I could never do it. I've played, Bruce, these things have been sitting around the church for a long time, and I've come in and I've picked up the sticks and I've tried to do that stuff. You know, Nelly, I've gotten on the keyboard. I've, even this one, I've played around on it. I can't make it sound like anything but noise. But glory be to God that he has somehow come in and he has, in his grace, given individuals the gifts that they need to make sweet music. Now, I can sing along. But even that has been something I've had to learn to do. It doesn't come natural. What does come natural is my gifts of compassion, my gifts of of pastoring, my gifts of preaching. And we all have gifts. And he, and he tools the church as a whole to bring in those gifts. And as each one does, then we are for the edification. We are for the edification and the building up of the church so that she can be fruitful. Paul, it's just interesting to me that Paul calls the gifts grace, unmerited, unearned. Favor. Now, that doesn't mean that Nellie didn't go to school and, and learn how to play better. That doesn't mean that Bruce didn't learn how and take some courses. I don't know. I'm, I'm just assuming. What it means is, is that they have the natural raw stuff and they hone their skills that they might do it well and do it great. And each one of us does that. I know that back there in the back room as she, as she endeavors to teach um, and it's exciting what's happening um, in our small groups, but this, but this truth project, uh, I went home, I was so excited about it, uh, but this truth project that Judy has this gift, and she went to college so that she might do it better. Amen, sister? Amen. She's awake. She's in the easy chair back there, and she's still awake. She's with me. Can't believe it. In my last church, I was plagued. I, you know, the, the, the characteristics are really important because in my last church I was, I was plagued with, with individuals who had um, a lot of the same gift. Um, and, and what I was plagued with was the inability to get anything built. We had to hire out just about everything or, or me and another guy or me pick one guy and, and go do it. But, but, but in that church... You know, it's mind-boggling to me, but in that church, we had a man who owned a multi-million dollar roofing company. He knew how to build things. We, we, had, a, we had a couple who owned a lumber yard, and in that lumber yard was a construction company within. They worked the construction. They did in small towns. You do everything. So they not only had the lumber, the materials, then they went out and they built, they built houses and they built things. In that congregation, we had three other carpenters who, one who had his own business, to others who ran the crews and the jobs for other companies. If you were a pastor in, in, a, in that church and you were looking at trustees to take care of the building, what, who would you look at? I see the smiles. Of course, it's like a no-brainer. Man, we got all these guys who have the know-how. Okay. And so, 
It took, you know, I, I, I marvel that it took me five years to rebuild the basement. My problem was is that these guys, with all their gifts, each one of them thought their way was the only right way to do it. And that's why Paul says one of the characteristics is humility. We've got to work together. There's, you know, and, and, and I, um, <laughs> you can't begin to, to imagine what it was like. We, we, we had uh, Ron McClung at the time come in. He dedicated it, and a month later, we had another flood. <laughs> and we're cutting out the drywall. And I'm crying at the altar. So, Lord, how do I lead these people again five more years? You know, we're equipped, but we, we, we've got we to gotta put on love. We've got to get unity, and we've got to get the purpose and work together. And we need to take on the characters, um, the character of what it is um, to use our calling. What do we do with, with these, um, the, what we're equipped with? When we've been given these gifts and these graces, we use them, the Bible says, for building up of saints. We use them, um, uh, for, we use our gifts for others. It's an act of service to the church, and it's what we're all about. And um, lastly, we also should be helping others find their gifts. We need to be training up our replacements. And the church hasn't done a great job. And I share all this today with you just to remind you that we want to live a life that matters, that is worthy of our calling. The end game is to have a uh, body of Christ that bears much fruit. It's able to win lost people to Christ, a church that's able to disciple new believers and a church that is equipping and training new disciples to take our place. And by the way, I would share with you, one of the things that I have found is, is that um, even, even for pastoring, I want to find people who can replace me. I'll never, the, the, the interesting thing that I have found about God uh, in the kingdom work is that I'll never be without a job to do. Doesn't matter. Um, one day I won't be the senior pastor. I, 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 I don't know what my future holds, but it could be that I become an associate pastor. I, you know, I've often wondered, will, will God make me go work under my son-in-law at some point? I don't know. I don't really care if I can be a part of it. But I want to be humble. I want to be patient. I want to take my gifts. And what a, a blessing it is, my friends, for you to have all these gifts. Can't do it without you. Doc, you make people better. I don't do that. Debbie, I hear all the time about people talk about the way you sing. I was told just uh, the other day, tell your wife she sings like an angel. Nellie, I'm grateful for you. I could never do that. Doris, you just keep on. You're like an energizer bunny. And encourage and encourage. And I just marvel at you. Use your gifts. Paul said to the church, I'll close. He said to church, he said, Live a life worthy, for you've been called. That's what I'm trying to say. You've been called. Live a life worthy of your call. Okay? Do it well. Go get them. Keep her up. All right? And uh, don't grow weary while doing. Okay? Um, I, I know that sometimes as we, as we do work in the church, you can get discouraged. Don't be. God's not done here. You got... There, there's you, you guys got great stuff. I love it. I love it. Okay. Can I pray for you? Father, 
a couple weeks ago, sent out an email to these, this group. Said, we're going to take a special offering for the people in Texas. We didn't know Florida was coming. And they responded with more than $1,000. Amazing. Just amazing. Their generosity. We got people, Lord, in this building, part of this church, who, um, who know and understand their gifts. We've just, um, Judy's just taken people through this um, understanding your gifts. And I pray, Lord, for those in, in our mix who are, are trying to figure out, Lord, just what you called them to do, to help them find their place. And Lord, uh, if they don't know it, they know it now. They have a pastor who's willing to let them try just about anything to see if it's what they should do or need to be doing. But help us, Lord, to do it in ways that build the church because too often I have seen it in the church that we don't. We, we, we let our pride get in the way. We're not humble. We let, uh, Lord, we let our impatience get in the way and we're not patient. We get filled up with ourselves and think well, nobody can do it like me. And that's just not true. Just help us a little bit, Lord. Help us to begin to tap those on the shoulder who can take uh, and do some of the things that we're doing. Help us to live the life that's worthy of the fact that you gave us the grace to this calling to do these things. And to be a part of these things. I pray for my people. I pray you encourage them. I pray, Lord, I don't, I, I, I'm sure, I know that I don't tell them often enough, Lord. But part of that is, is I want them to do it for you anyhow, not for me. But I'm grateful for them. And encourage them, Holy Spirit. And remind them to be one in purpose, that we are here because we want everybody, because we just believe that everybody ought to know who Jesus is. This is our goal. This is your command. And help us to do it well. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. May God cause his face to shine upon you. God bless you.